One of the things that I thought might be useful is we do a lot of the projects and things like that and come up with creating our own things like lower thirds and transitions and stuff in Camtasia. And that's all fun and stuff, but the uh, issue sometimes is, well, how do you find stuff to do? And I thought it might be kind of useful if I just gave a little bit of an overview of how I find stuff to, oh gosh, how shall I put this? Uh, yeah, rip off. So here's just a little bit of my flow on how I do such a thing. And, and then I'm going to walk you through uh, it will actually hit a piece of content for next month here. Uh, so I'm going to show you kind of how I find some stuff, then a quick layout on how I start to rip it off, and then how I put it all together in Camtasia. Right? So you can kind of think of this as you're kind of looking at things, and trust me, you know, we all know there's no shortage of interesting things out there. <laughs> to kind of use in our video projects and stuff. And certainly when we can kind of create those on our own, we right off the bat eliminate a couple of different issues. One is a licensing issue. Okay, so here I am on one of our favorite sources here called Video Hive. And if you guys aren't on the Envato Marketplace, you should be, because every month you get kind of free st stuff, right? But here's the caveat. It's free for what's called a regular license. And you might, you know, if I go ahead and let this preview roll here a little bit, I watched this and I thought, oh, wow, that's kind of neat, right? It's like a little tab and it pops out a little bit and wiggles. And then this mouse arrow comes out and grabs it and drags it out. So it's just, you know, kind of an interesting lower third and stuff. And right off the bat, I'd probably think, oh, for 10 bucks, you know, I, I might uh, grab that and then be able to use it in all my projects. But you kind of can't do that because of licensing. So this is what's called a regular license. Uh, and then you got to go get into a whole different thing, you know, one client, one product and it's all very vague. So if we can kind of create our own stuff, then I'm somewhat on board with that for the most part. So I get rid of the licensing issue and I also get a high level of customization. For example, unless you have After Effects, this little project here it would be very difficult to change like the colors and things like that or make it to what you want it to do. Uh, so customization is the other kind of key there. So what I do is I kind of find stuff that's not too crazy, right? Because we're going to be animating in Camtasia and, you know, quite frankly, Camtasia is not a high-end animation tool. But could I do this? Yeah, I can do that like all day long in Camtasia. So I find stuff that's kind of nice, interesting, not too, you know, swirly and complicated. And then I decide that I kind of want to steal this, <laughs> right? So here's kind of my process for doing such a thing. First, I will generally open up PowerPoint. PowerPoint for me is much more than something that I use to create slides for like slide video content. So I'll start a project. So this is my tabs lower third template. And on this next slide here, Here's kind of a couple of tips that I use to kind of steal something. First of all, you'll notice down here is a link. Okay, and this just copy paste <laughs> uh, from from the the site here that I want to rip off, right? Uh, but PowerPoint also has this kind of nice little feature called a screen snippet or a screen snag. So this image right here, okay, is like the sample. And the way I get it is I go to, I make sure my window is open here. Okay, so this is what I want to rip off. And what I'm looking for here is like a visual guide, right? Uh, so something to work from without switching back and forth. And PowerPoint has a nice little tool here to do that. And it's called a screen clipping. Okay, so I just click this. It switches over to the open window. 
you grab what you want and boom there you go okay so now I have my my sample guide and this works for a lot of different things okay let's say I wanted to match the colors of a certain website for images that I was going to use okay you can do a screen grab and then you know when you go to pick your colors and stuff like that well you can of course use say I want to do you can use the eyedropper tool okay so you can kind of get uh, quick and easy colors and stuff like that so that's one of the things that I, I kind of like to do so this is a almost like a, a working palette uh, and seriously then to kind of create this effect in Camtasia of course what I'm going to need are some images and one of the things I love about PowerPoint oh my gosh I like this is that I am not a graphic artist <laughs> by any stretch of the imagination but what I find is that in PowerPoint it's really not very difficult to use things like shapes and stuff like that to kind of duplicate this so literally this is I just went to insert and chose a shape and this is one of the shapes it's called a rounded rectangle Okay, I'll actually insert one here for a second. See that? That's all. I, that's all I did, and then changed like the fill color, uh, and for this particular example to get the kind of off-white tab color, I probably even used one of the nice little presets here. I don't know if I did or not, but but anyway, the formatting and stuff is really easy. I'm not really going to belabor that too much. These right here are shapes but they're just lines okay so you just draw you draw you out a couple of lines and again those are just shapes so I could uh, insert shapes lines draw a couple lines <laughs> you know and thicken them up and it's just like stupid easy right so that's basically kinda how I lay it out uh, I made myself a mouse here this is really just another shape. It's an arrow with a thick outline. Okay, but you notice that it, gosh, it kind of looks like, you know, the proper kind of thing. Oh, and when I mentioned flexibility, uh, I made me like a couple more. Here's one with a blue outline. Here's one with a, a gray outline. So what I'm kind of doing here is just, you know, creating elements and yeah, deciding what I like and maybe I might like this guy by the way here's a let me give you a quick trick here PowerPoint trick let's say I want to make this cursor image red well what you could do of course is right click or control C and copy you know and then paste if you didn't know this if you click on an object and then just hold the control key and drag it it makes a copy right so it's even easier than control C and then moving it and stuff like that because it copies it as you put it where you want it <laughs> so that's kinda neat so here I would just go in I don't know let's just change the fill a little bit now I got me a red cursor right so that's literally kinda all I do to create some of these things and as we'll see in this particular project I save these out as individual elements well let me just enlarge this uh, sample here so in this project uh, no, you know what I'm gonna go back to the um, the video and we'll let that roll a second I'll go ahead and put uh, the link in there too for you guys to go check this out so we let this roll a little bit comes out this little plus button twirls down the mouse comes up clicks it and then this other element drops down so in PowerPoint all I've really done is created each of those graphic elements here's the main tab here's the little one that drops down this is just a shape <laughs> with a plus sign in it uh, and then what happens is I'll save all of these components individually and we'll put them together in Camtasia 
and my arrows or whatever else I want to use. Okay? Uh, what version of PowerPoint am I in? This is 2013. And if you don't see screen clipping tool in your list of tools, uh, let me see here. Mine are on my quick tab here. And let's see, there's a way to add. Uh, you go to like more commands here. And then you're going to get like everything. And screen clipping, uh, screen clipping should be somewhere popular commands so you know it's probably under uh, one of these other notice it says popular commands here so if you don't see it there it's because I guess it's just not that popular <laughs> uh, that kind of thing so you might need to hunt around it a little bit for it it's not popular uh, yeah and I think it's uh, it, I, I'm sure it's somewhere else too but you know I don't want to belabor that too much. Once I kind of get something created and I've grouped this up, you know, uh, and things like that, so it's it's a single image, basically you just right click and save as picture. Okay, and then I'm just going to kind of save all of these different assets out. And then in Camtasia, uh, we can just kind of start putting some of this together with some animation. And let me just open that project up real quick. But like I say, uh, sometimes it's just kind of handy to be able to find something interesting. And I'll tell you, literally, once you get just even slightly good at looking at this and saying, oh, okay, well, that's a rounded rectangle, <laughs> you know, and there's some lines. And that's a circle with a circle in it. A circle with a circle in it and a plus piece of, you know, a text and you just size it all up then once you kinda get it all done you group it together okay so these are just grouped and you save them out as images now let's think about this for a second uh, just before I move on these are little cursors okay and as you remember in the animation here the cursor moves up and makes a click well I could use a cursor and I can make it like huge right uh, for some kind of video project where I didn't want my mouse, you know, I didn't want to use my mouse cursor, but I want to show a cursor moving to here and then clicking, right? So look at that. I mean, I just created myself a whole bunch, and again, I can just keep creating stuff, different colors, different shapes, uh, whatever, and using them as, as assets down the road, okay, in projects. So in a project here, uh, this is a little bit of my development, and it looks a little complicated, but really it's it's not too complicated. But I do have a couple of quick tricks here that I want to show you, and let's just kind of take a look at what uh, one of these final things might look like. So here, let me stretch that out a little bit, right? You'll notice that I have uh, a couple of groups. Yeah, is this the right one? Let me check. And goes out. All right, so I'm going to just kind of step through this, scrub through it slow. First thing the video does is this tab comes in and it kind of wiggles, right? So it boop, pops out. Okay, then what happens is the mouse comes up, the mouse grabs it and scooches it over and the mouse disappears. When it's time to go away, the mouse comes back and shoves it in. Okay, so that's one version. Uh, the other version has a little twirly thing and whatnot, but let's just use a, a little simpler version here because, like I say, there's a couple of things that I want to show you. So basically uh, it consists of several elements okay first there is the rectangle right and for this particular one so there is the rectangle object right here that I saved from PowerPoint on top of that 
uh, I put just a text box which is my name so this is where I could change the text of the lower third right and then uh, we also have the exit animation now what you'll find is that if you were to try to do this thing in one fell swoop the, the problem that I ran into and the little tip and fix that I have for you is basically this it's how long do I want this to stay okay uh, since these are all grouped together you know, you might be tempted to think that we could just change the length of the group here but what that does is it screws up any exit animation or the mouse coming in and exiting so the way I kinda got around that is I just created two animations and you'll notice uh, let's see here let's stretch this out a little bit so this particular group does nothing more than open right and then I just copied that and pasted it to another group that I call close okay so everything's in the same position and then at this point the mouse comes in you know so there's two animations there's the uh, tab moving out and the mouse coming in right but the kind of secret here is again uh, what if I wanted this to stay longer on the screen if these two were joined together then you can't just you know move the end because what will happen well it'll screw these two animations up but if you think outside the box and now say okay it's in <laughs> and I can make it stay as long as I want and I'll show you how in just a second and then then whenever I want have it all go away okay so let's see how that works so let's say I don't want this to last that long okay the way I would do it is I can open this up and now I can shorten this first clip I can move the close in and I can match up the exit animation right so by breaking it into a couple of different segments instead of having all of these animations let's open these two that uh, can only open one at a time instead of having all these animations in this group which watch what happens I'll actually demonstrate it for you if I want to shorten the length of time this is here well if I grab this and and slide it notice what happened to my let me get this out of the way notice what happened to my animations well now they're gone <laughs> you know I, I chopped them off oh, I don't want to do that uh, so that's what would happen if these were both together but by splitting them into two now it's really easy to control could I have gone in and oh you know may move these manually and stuff like that yeah but by using this tactic I don't have to do that this group of animation makes it come in make it last as long as you want and then this guy makes it go away and you just put them right together okay does that uh, kinda make sense to everybody and is that kind of thing useful so I'm going to include this you know like I say in uh, next month's content once I get all of the whiz bangs and the other uh, pieces of it finished up here like uh, I think I have a twirly thingy okay that's a single I'm pretty sure I have a working drop down also uh, where is that guy there it is so I, I basically use the same kind of tactics to do the little twirly drop down thingy right just a, a few more steps and a few more pieces in the group 
so you'll get you'll get this project file and these um, I actually added a little sound effect to this guy too but let's just take a look at this <laughs> you'll notice that it starts to get a little more complicated <laughs> why because well I added not just that rectangle tab but now I got uh, now I got this element that needs to come in which is the slider that drops down underneath here and I got the button and stuff like that so you know I, I think there comes a point where of diminishing returns uh, yeah I mean it's a little complicated to figure this out whether or not I'd want to do that or you know perhaps I do just want to buy it <laughs> Uh, but if nothing else, it's a kind of interesting learning experience, and f you don't have to learn how to do it. Uh, I'm just going to give these to you, right? I'll have a library file, uh, but I thought to just kind of set that up for next time. This just a little bit of a walkthrough and that particular tip and idea. So anyway, that's kind of fun, right? Right. But you you can make all kinds of cool stuff in PowerPoint. And, you know, I do this a lot. Um, one, because I just, you know, if it's simple and easy to do, I do it once and then I own it. It's mine, right? I don't have to, oh, regular license, gee, that kind of thing. And I can then go in later and do whatever the heck I want. Right? Well, gosh, I don't really want the white here. What can we do? Well, let's click on this tab guy here. Let's go to Format. And let's look at some of these things. And all you got to do is hover over them, and you'll get a preview. Okay, so that's nice, clean, and simple. Uh, what else do we got here? How about, like, a green tab or a blue tab? Right? So you can, um, you know, do all kinds of formatting stuff if you want to. And that's kind of why I like PowerPoint also. All right.